So what's up guys? Sounds like it's time to get started. So the goal of my talk is to share why does data consistency matters. So why should you care? If you don't, your customers or your company might simply lose money. And I will present at least five solutions how to prevent this from happening. But first of all, why does this topic matters to me? I'm currently working for eBay Classifieds unit uh, in a motors vertical, and our goal is to boost car selling and car buying experience across our markets across the globe. So imagine you are the customer who want to sell a car, and you post your listing. And for some reason, we lose your listing, we lose your message, and your posting didn't get published. You find it only in a week. So your car wasn't clicked, your car wasn't viewed, your car wasn't bought. Won't be your happy customer? No, indeed. Then before joining eBay, I was working for another company based in Hamburg called Creditech. So they are doing loans, consumer loans, and credit scoring. Imagine you take a loan, and you are a good customer who repays the loan. But we lose one of your repayments. And incidentally, you go into debt collection process. Not good because your credit scoring will be affected, and this might be a big paperwork for you as a client. And before joining Credit Tech, I was working for a company named Capital. It was a payment provider. And imagine we transfer your salary, and we lose your salary because we lose your message. We didn't save it properly to database. You won't be also a happy customer. So those are all the problems for data consistency. And why do they come together with microservices architecture? So whenever we design a system as a set of independent services, they have different technologies, different bounded context, even built by multiple teams. And what can happen that due to the fact that we have multiple data storages, your data can be lost. So we can save data in one service, then we try to save it in another one, the service gets restarted or some networking issue happens, and the data is gone. So those are exactly the scenarios we are trying to prevent. And the goal for this talk is actually share five different solutions how to do that, or five different patterns. Indeed, the patterns are not new, but for me, when I was starting microservices architecture roughly like four years ago, there was no good overview of such data consistency patterns. And as you might remember from my experience for my business units, the data consistency was always a priority. So let's get started. But first, the first example. Let's get into e-commerce. You are the customer taking an order. First step, order service receives your request. Second, we create the record about initial order received. Then we try to charge you. So we make a call to payment service. So and you was charged. And then something happened, like we redeploy the service or it just get restarted and your transaction is gone and we didn't update the order status to confirmed. So on this order, we will never get into delivery service. And this is exactly the scenario where microservices and data consistency make this joint mistake where you can lose your data consistency. What could be a solution? I guess many of you have heard about Saga pattern. Yeah, that's the most common and famous data consistency solution. How we can present Saga? So I would start with two ingredients. So the first one is so-called compensating operations. What is that? Coming back to our orders and payments. So we design API for our services. We create the first one like we want to create order, we want to receive order by ID, and then we add the compensating operation, which is we want to delete an order if something goes wrong or just customer decided to delete an order. The same goes with payments. So we create an endpoint to create a payment, we create an endpoint to receive a payment, and we might want to cancel the payment afterwards. The second ingredient, I personally call it reconciliation. So the term comes from financial industry and you probably won't find it as a design pattern, but I find it the easiest way how to explain this approach. So if you know, like, different banks can exchange data between each other. So there are global protocols like SEPA payments or SWIFT. And if you ever wondered how do banks find out if, like, they 
properly transferred money without any loss guarantees. There is one procedure that comes also from accounting, which is named reconciliation. So this might be in the form of MT940 file, so you can exchange between multiple entities. And what you can do, you can check the summary of your account balance in one point and the summary of your different account. So do they match or not? So this is financial principle. How can it apply to microservices? So the same you can check uh, maybe within the end of day or on some event or trigger if your services are fully in sync, if any single message was lost. And you can go with two different implementations. So the first one would be do it on a scheduled basis. So in accounting, it's frequently called end of day procedure. So basically you go by end of day and reconcile all of your accounting statements on all of the different charts of account. The same you can apply to microservices. You can, by end of day, on a scheduled basis, go through payment services. You can go through order services and to find if all the orders are paid and in sync. But you might not want to wait until the end of day and do it more event-driven manner. So how it can work out? So getting back to our example. So first we created the record in order service. Then we created the payment record. And then we failed and didn't confirm the order. How we can reconcile? So imagine as a customer, you probably received an error message because your HTTP request failed. What we can do on the front end, we can check by transaction ID or just get all the orders of the customer to check what's the current status. And while we are order, uh, loading the orders for the customer, we can already go through the orders and check the status. If one of those is already paid or what's the status that is not paid. So we go by the specific order ID into the payment service to get more details about the order. And then we see, okay, so the order was successfully paid. Therefore, we can check, set the status into the order service as paid. In this way, your customer might not even notice a single error. So this would be smoothly and with a slight delay than usual. So the first like service was restarted, there was an error, error wasn't shown to customer. We load the transaction again, we check the status, we check that it's in progress, we check the payment, we confirm the status. Or we may say that payment wasn't successful and then we apply compensating operation. So basically we delete an order if it wasn't paid. But what if it gets more complex? So imagine we are ordering not a sneakers on eBay, but we are ordering a trip. So the trip might consist of flights, hotels, and transfers between flights and hotels. So here we have like five service participants. In the previous example, we checked status in one service, checked another status in another service. So with five services, it already getting complex. And therefore we can apply another solution, which is application event log. So I guess you guys deal with logs on a daily basis for debug purposes, for troubleshooting. So this technique is quite similar, but it's more application aware logging. So how does it look like? We can track in one place all the steps of our distributed business process that needs to be atomic from customer point of view. And we can figure out like in a one single place where the status where it get failed. So effectively we can track, okay, first we requested an order, then we completed the payment, then we booked flight hotels, and for example, we failed, yes. So then we can go through the table, find the latest status, and then resume the process and apply the same technique. Either confirm and finish the business operation or to cancel it and apply reconciliation. As you might get, so this could be a kind of orchestration process, but it's not necessary an orchestration. So you can be distributed and in a choreography manner, each of your distributed process participants can know the state and how to process the next step. So the idea of the application log is actually to create the one single place, the one single source of truth, where you currently are, not to call five different services because it might get complex and might get slow. And it doesn't apply any of those uh, reconciliation or saga-based solution. It didn't apply the consistency fix immediately. So you will have records in one of your services in some in-progress status, which is not yet valid from business point of view. For example, order which is not yet paid, it shouldn't go yet to delivery service. So your other services need to get aware of the intermediate state and you need to deal with those intermediate periods of inconsistency. And it's still complex, so you design a lot of compensating operations, 
you design the process of how to resume the business transaction from the particular step, and it takes time and effort. So the question would be, why don't we have the standard solution for the problem? So it seems like everyone nowadays is dealing with microservices, and many of you can get into the same challenges of data consistency. Can we get a standard protocol? So first, the history record of what was the standard protocol, which is still an option. So the example could be two-phase commit or XA transactions. If you are dealing with Java Enterprise, so you might remember GDA specification and that it can get into distributed transactions, which will look for you as one. I remember I was using that roughly five years ago in a private data center setup in not such a huge load. But what are the challenges of this solution? So you have two-phase communication, which can introduce some latency, and your availability depends on the transaction coordinator. So nowadays, with more scale and many maybe cloud environment with less stable predictable networking, this cannot always work. And the reason why, in my point of view, it doesn't work that well is the attempt to apply ACID guarantees. So ACID is like in our normal transactional uh, relational databases, the consistency guarantee, which says I have two records, either both of them are saved, either both of them are reverted by rollback. And when we try to apply the same to microservices, due to the fact that we have multiple different technologies, networking, cloud, load, and many other challenges, that doesn't work that well. Therefore, the solution is to trade basically base over ACID. What is base is basically accepting the fact that in some of the services, in some period of time, you will have this intermediate in progress status that you need to treat differently. So Effectively, I didn't found a single solution which will show you that, okay, these services are fully AC, so they behave like transactional database. So it's almost, in any case, a trade-off. So far, it was the most complex explanation in my talk. Does it make sense? Cool. But the question remains. So we have seen the solution with compensating operations and reconciliation. So can we make it simpler? So what's the root cause of why we are having those compensating operations? This is the fact that we are m trying to make an atomic change in two different data storages. So what if we do it differently? So what if we try to say, okay, we make a change in one process only in one database? And this solution can be named as change data capture. So this is one of such solutions. So how does it look like? Instead of trying to modify two services at the same time, we try to say, okay, we receive an order, and first what we do, we store the order in order database. The separate process will make for us the change capture. So it will detect that record was created, we can pick up this record and make a payment. How is it different? So in previous example, in one process, we basically make two calls to two services and change to different states. Here, we always make change in one data storage. So either it gets together in one record, so it's either saved or not. So you won't get into the state where you have to manually reconcile the services. Because eventually, change capture process will always pick this change. How this can be implemented? So this can be implemented also based on the same event application log table, so the simplest one. So you have the table where you track your events, like order was requested. And your change capture just pulls the table. And by the way, this uh, process where you have multiple participants with one single event log is really scalable. So I remember in one of my previous examples in a loan-based process, so we effectively made 20 atomic operations, 20 atomic calls, which could be reconciled from the single table. So the process was like whenever you create a customer, you create tons of accounts, tons of different records. So this solution really scalable. But back to the change data capture topic. So if we poll the table, so as you may get, this gets into load distribution problem. So you need somehow to make sure that the solution scales, and whenever you have more than one process, which will poll the table, that they will distribute the work. There are some techniques and solutions how to make it simpler. For example, many databases, they offer operation log. 
So this lock can be used, for example, between distribution of changes from master to read replicas, or can be used by your application. So in some databases, it's more documented. In some databases, it's less documented. But at least you don't have to pull, pull the table continuously. So the change is propagated to you by the operation log and change log notification. We can put even more improvements on that. So there are solutions like if you are using Kafka, there is a solution called Kafka Connect, which can help you to stream your changes from the database to Kafka topics through different connectors, and one of those connectors is Tabasium. And tomorrow we will have another talk from Gunnar from Red Hat, who will share more insights about the Basium connectors. So I won't step much more here into details. So basically, you have a standardly deployed solution with Kafka Connect, with Kafka Workers. It takes care of work distribution. It takes care of how to capture changes from your schema. You can create different customized mappings, and you save time. What could be the challenges with this approach? So the first one, if you go with standard package solution, you can split the process. It's good and bad. So in one place, you are creating only order record, and there is a separate Kafka connector which picks up this change. So in previous example with compensations and Saga, you just simply have all the process in one place. So here it's more distributed, which is not that bad, but just the matter. Then you can go with the standard solution like Kafka Connect, and you will deal with a package solution. So you will have less flexibility than you have with your code. So you will have to learn how to monitor it, how to operate it properly, what happens if some messages are lost for some reason. Or you can go with self-implemented solutions, but then you will have to deal with all the challenges like how to distribute the work, how to pull the changes, and both has its pros and cons. The other solution, even first. So what could be the challenge if you go with change data capture? One of those were like the business process gets less obvious if you split the logic. Then if you go with standard connectors, you might be more coupled to the schema of your database, which you might don't want to expose. You might be more coupled to the versions of Kafka and database due to the connector support. You might be limited in connector support. So there is another solution, the even first. And once again, it's not the very new pattern. So I guess many of you know event-driven architecture. Yes. So you may treat it as a special way of event-driven architecture or the special way of secure S pattern, command request segregation. How does it work? So we do it oppositely. So first, we receive an order. And instead of creating the database change, we simply publish an event that order was received. And this event stream, which could be a Kafka topic or a message broker or maybe a database, becomes the single source of truth. And then the other services, including order service, they pick up this change and they update their own data state. Once again, so here we have single source of truth, which is our event stream. And we can rely on it. So we can say, OK, if event was saved, then effectively both payments and orders will receive this change and will process it. If not, then not. And on this solution, we are currently heavily relying on eBay classifieds unit and especially in motors vertical. So we use in many places Kafka as a single source of truth. So where we can publish, for instance, listing, for instance, a car or cat or whatever customer wants to sell. And then other services can update their own view based on this. And very conceptual in this topic is your change of middleware. So many of you who know event-driven architecture, they probably know the differences between messaging and even streaming solution. So if you go, for instance, with message brokers like RabbitMQ or ActiveMQ, you got the queuing and topics approach. So you can get individual message processing. You can get retry pattern out of the box. You can get dead letter queues. But you can go also with an event stream like Kafka or Amazon Kinesis. So this will be slightly different. So you will publish a stream of events. So what you can get with this approach, you can guarantee of order of processing. Because how Kafka works internally, it assigns the consumer to the specific partition so that it will process messages strongly sequential. This is something that is very hard to achieve with message brokers. But as a downside, you don't have retries or dead letter queue pattern out of the box. And you might don't want to apply one. So it's slightly different concept. On top of that, you might want to use uh, another one, which is even data store or even database. So those technologies are mainly used and designed specifically for 
secure REST use case, common query segregation. So they offer on top query capabilities. So you may get query capabilities, for instance, with uh, Kafka streams, but you may use also special database, which can help you also doing atomic data check. So for instance, you want to apply event only if the latest version of event is, for instance, five, so that we always apply events consistently in a given order. So once again, those technology solutions for even driven approach or even first are very fundamental because they give you different capabilities and different techniques. So it's mainly not about load, which of those scales better, but which of those conceptually fit into your design. I remember that in one of my previous financial experience, we were dealing with message brokers, and it was slightly harder to apply even driven approach exactly because of order of events, because somewhere in transaction world, you might want to process events strongly sequential. So it can give you some limitations and the way how you can apply event driven or event first approach. But how we can make it even more simpler? So the first use case, we had different data stores, one atomic process. Then if failure happens, we were trying to reconcile them. The next solution was let's change only one data source in a time. Either with change data capture, where you first change your database record, then you fire an event or notify other services. The other was event first approach, where you publish an event as an atomic record. And the simple solution is basically don't care about consistency. This can be also a solution. So not every business operation requires accounting grade financial consistency or strong consistency in general. So you may say, for example, for data analytics or data warehousing scenarios, you can say, okay, I'll just make a database record and I'll fire an event. Because usually the event firing is pretty fast, so there is a, like a single millisecond latency. It's still not acceptable, for example, in finance, because still you can have restart within those one millisecond between database safe call and uh, atomic event safe. So this won't guarantee your full consistency, but it might be good enough to give you, for example, statistical data. So if you are building recommendations on top of your data and you just share data with your central data solution to build your recommendations, so if few random messages will be lost, so it's not a big problem. So there is no need always to aim for full 100% consistency guarantees. It's somewhere required, somewhere not. And the other way how to make it even more simple is to apply consistency at very first design phase. So assuming you are designing the whole system from scratch, like you are thinking about your microservices, you are thinking about your domain boundaries, you already decided which team will build what, what will be the interfaces, like what will be the technologies. The first thing you look when you design your microservices is probably your domain. So you look into uh, domain boundaries, what are the aggregation routes, how does it fit into a different change life cycle, how does it fit in different performance scenarios. But you can also apply consistency, and you can say, okay, that uh, according to domain-driven design, I apply consistency guarantees to one aggregation route only. And I design my services in a way so that the things that need to be consistent, they will stay in one microservice. Well, I also remember the example from the past. We were trying to design some accounting microservices as a five different services. So basically, we had many challenges how to make them consistent. And in the end, we decided that for us, it's easier just to merge them into one. So this could be two different journeys. You can get to microservices, and in some cases, you can get back. But of course, not to the full monolith. It wasn't the solution, and it's not my message. So what would be my choice if I would think about the system? So I would basically start from back and moving forward to all the solutions I presented. So I will start first considering like how can I make my system in a way so that I don't have to care about consistency all the time. So I will try to apply the main boundaries first. Then whenever those are applied, I will think like which of those places really need like accounting grade consistency where I cannot lose a single message. This will be my second step. Then for me personally at least it's easier to apply the change in one place and don't go with reconciliation and compensating operations. So therefore, for instance, in eBay, we rely on Kafka as a single source of truth in some of the use cases. So we apply one single message and we take all the updates for other services out of it. But it unfortunately doesn't always fit. So sometimes you want to have your uniqueness checks and have very strict consistency requirements so that you cannot 
easily apply when driven architecture. So sometimes, I believe it's always possible, but it's just the question of complexity. So sometimes you might just want to run into synchronous orchestration with restful calls, and then just add reconciliation on top. So it's not a cure of your service. So it will get slightly more complex, yes, but you can still use it. And you can go with both orchestration and choreography, so that doesn't mean that you need to go with one single service which knows all the business process. And unfortunately, there are even more consistency problems which I won't cover in this talk. So what are those? So like the most famous are like ordering of events or uh, just one delivery guarantee or for instance, whenever you have the asynchronous indexing like in Elasticsearch, so you insert the record, but then it will get indexed within the second end. Your application might rely on the fact that record was already created. So all those challenges are around distributed systems in general. And even with one service and without microservices approach, you can get into consistency challenges easily. So, and there, few books I would really love to recommend. So the first one, Designing Data Intensive Applications, uh, it's exactly about this distributed system consistency challenges. So the author goes in depth of some database implementation. It has both theoretical and practical approach, and it covers this first point of data consistency in distributed systems in general, and not only data consistency, but much more of data intensive system or systems which deal with data in general. The other one is microservices patterns, and it goes a lot by uh, these patterns I presented about microservices and data consistency. For example, there is a well-defined description of Saga. You can go more details into this book. And we share more insights at our technical blog, and I will publish my slides right over there after this talk. Thank you very much, and it's time for questions. Questions, guys? Okay, tricky questions. No one? Then, thank you once again for your attention. Have fun. <laughs>